Today on Live Your Faith. The Lord Jesus says to those of you that overcome it, those of you who become good ground in the middle of this, hallelujah, the blessing is coming your way. I don't care what your problem has been in the past, you can overcome now, hallelujah. Whatever you've fallen down, you can turn around and get back on the answer, hallelujah. And you can become an overcomer again. Now remember, you can always repent, which means at any point, you can turn around and reverse the problem. Glory to God. He said if we come boldly to the throne of grace, the first thing we'll find is mercy. Amen. 1 John 1, 9 said if we confess our sin, God's faithful and just to forgive us and do what? Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But he said, but if you don't repent, I will remove your candlestick. That candlestick is the church. He just said, church, I will take you out of your place. Now, if God sets a church to be light in an area and a church loses its first love, and he said, if y'all don't change, you're going to lose your light, that means he still loves those people through which he sent that church in the first place. So what's he going to do? Raise up another one in the same place. And sometimes why God sends multiple churches in the same place is because over time, the churches got their light extend, extinguished. They still around. They still got the shingle on the door. They still having the religious stuff. Hello, somebody. But there is no power. So Satan will use cares of this world to do it. Let's read on a little, just a little bit more. Praise God. Thank you for that. Come on, Bishop. I appreciate that. I need some more spinach. Come on, somebody. Ah. I'm ready for a few more verses now. Notice verse 8. Unto the angel of the church at Smyrna, right. These things said the first and the last who was dead and is alive. I know your works. I know your tribulation. I know your poverty. But you are rich. I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not. And are the synagogue of Satan. I don't have time to teach all the stuff that's in here. He says in verse 10, fear, that, fear none of these things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you in the prison that you may be tried. You shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Well, how is Satan trying to take out the church of Smyrna? He's trying to take them out with number one and number two. Take them out with affliction and persecution. Double whammy. Now, with that first church, there was an answer, right? Anybody remember what the answer was to number three? Cares of this world, can anybody tell me what the answer was? Set your affections back in the right place. That's repenting. I used to didn't tell me. What's going to be the answer to affliction and persecution? They're going to have to have some joy in the middle of the trial. They're going to have to laugh at their problem. They're going to have to love their persecutors, and they're going to release the power. This is the persecuted church. Note what he says, praise God. Verse 11, he that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be heard of the second death. Every single one of these churches Despite their problems, the Lord Jesus says to those of you that overcome it, those of you who become good ground in the middle of this, hallelujah, the blessing is coming your way. I don't care what your problem has been in the past, you can overcome now, hallelujah. Whatever you've fallen down, you can turn around and get back on the answer, hallelujah. And you can become an overcomer again. 
He ends these letters with, to he that overcometh, but that's your choice. Amen. I choose to become an overcomer. Hallelujah. Anybody else in here wants to be an overcomer? Only good ground becomes overcome. He even said that with the first church, to he that overcomes in verse 7. Let's read on down to another church. Praise God. We see what Satan's doing. Verse 12, to angel of the church in Pergamos, right? He says in verse 13, I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is. Thou holdest fast my name, have not denied my faith. Look at all these good things in the church. Even in those days where an Antipas was my faithful murder, who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. Well, he passed him on the back too, but then he begins to talk, of, talk to them about what? This word means compromise. Compromise is when you will tone it down. To get along for something you want, their acceptance. Amen? Now, you know, people say, don't take all the stuff we do. You don't have to shout and run and dance, and you don't have to make all that noise. You don't have to do all of that. Amen? Become more civil. As long as I'm running this ministry... I read in the word where they ran and they shouted for joy. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. They didn't keep quiet. We ain't going to do it if it's everybody think we are nuts and want nothing to do with us. We're going to be good ground. God's been too good for me to me to be louder at a Detroit Tigers game than I am at the church. to root more for a baseball team than to thank God because he healed me and delivered me and provided for me and set me free. Hallelujah. I got the praise come. And I refuse to be civilized. First person to run the other day was me. And you don't watch it, I'm about to run again. The church became one to compromise because of lust of other things. And the pressure will be upon you to be a little bit different in order to get along. So if you be this way, then maybe the city fathers will like you. But let me tell you, whatever God's called you to do, it ain't going to get worked out by natural means. It is not by power. Not by my might or power but by his spirit. Well, what was the answer to lust of the flesh? Because that's lust of the flesh. People think of lust of the flesh as just a sin. It's just sex. Lust of the flesh can be anything. It is a desire for fame, fortune, all sorts of stuff. Are you listening to me? Acceptance, that's lust of the flesh. Pat on the back. Amen. Sympathy can be love to the flesh. Come on, somebody. Some people love just misery, love company. I need three praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Getting too quiet in here. He attacked the church with it. Amen. But he goes on to say here in verse 17. He that have an ear to hear, let them hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. To him that overcome, I will, I, will eat of, I will eat of the hidden manna and will give him a white stone. Praise God. God's going to give him hidden manna. That's what's that? Supernatural provision. You remember manna that came from heaven, even in the wilderness, when it looks like that there's no way the bill can't be paid. 
But when you refuse to compromise, God's got something hidden for you. You don't even know where it is. You don't have to see where it's coming from. It's not your business to see where it's coming from. It's your business to do what God said. And he'll pull something out of there, man, you don't even know where that one came from. And all of a sudden, the money will be there, the provision will be there, the people will be there, the favor will be there. Call right to call. But not if you compromise. See, we found another one in here. Praise God. Look at verse 18. Unto the angel of the church in Tyratira, right. This is the corrupted church. This church becomes corrupt. You read it in verse 20. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee because you suffer or you allow that woman. Now, look at how God phrased that. He didn't say because you suffer the woman. He said because you suffer that woman. You know, like when your wife said, now that woman. In other words, he ain't very pleased about this. You suffer that woman, Jezebel, which calls herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants. This church is corrupt. Why? This woman was wealthy. And because she was wealthy, they allowed this woman to do what she wanted because I'm sure she's writing big checks. I've had people come to me in the time that I was pastoring in this church. I've had people come to me who are wealthy. Like, I never look at financial things, so I don't know what a person gives. Amen. I don't know who the big givers are, the small givers are, the medium. I don't know who they are unless you come up and tell me. I don't know. I don't look. I don't care. Are you listening to me? I've had people come up to me in years past, come up to me and say, well, you know, I gave $100,000 to the church last year. I gave $150,000 to the church last year, and I think that we ought to do such and such. And I tell them, praise God, thank you for the $150,000 you gave last year. We ain't doing such and such. Now you can hit the door and let it hit you where you go. Yes, I have said that. Are you listening to me? Glory to God. Otherwise, Satan will send you someone that at first you think it is God's provision and what it is is Satan's attempt to corrupt your ministry and take control of your house. I remember my spiritual father, Dad Hagen. They believed that God wanted them to publish his books now. We've all, many of us, read all the many books. But at first, when they first started, you know, they're, they're looking to get the tapes out and the books out. And I can remember him telling us, very well-heeled individual showed up. And yes, I'll do all this, you know, and I'll, I'll, the guy's got the money, and I'll finance the whole thing. But before you run off, you need to seek the Lord, even though this looks like. And the Lord said to him, don't you take that from him. Sometimes you do look a gift horse in the mouth and walk away from it. Maybe I get an amen on this side. Amen. Everything is offered is not necessarily God's provision. Amen. Thank God he listened. Praise the Lord. And the Lord funded it all different way than that. Praise God. This church became corrupted with what? Number four, deceitfulness of riches. What's the answer to number four? Praise God. Once again, seek first the kingdom of God. Seek his way of doing things. All the things that get added to you. Hallelujah. Well, let's go on and take a look at a few more churches. Anybody getting anything out of this? We look at chapter three, verse one. Here's a very interesting one to me. Praise God. And to the angel of the church in Sardis write, These things say if he did have the seven spirits of God, the seven stars. I know your works. I know that you have an unima. That word name is unima in the Greek. Unima means authority and character. I know you have an authority. I've given you an authority. Amen. I know you have an authority. I know you're alive, 
but I say you're dead. Did Jesus just say that the church was dead? Yeah, he did. How do you kill a church? He said dead. You know when something is dead, there ain't nothing happening. The other ones he talked about, you did this, you did this, and then now here's a problem. Here, he ain't got nothing good to say except you dead. <laughs> How did he become dead? You allow all seven to work. You don't want to hear what God's got to say about it. You made up your own mind. Come on, somebody. You don't spend any time in the word. You shout about it, but that's all. You have no root. As soon as affliction comes to you, ah! soon persecution comes to you, ah! you get caught up with the cares of the world, running after the deceitfulness of riches and lust of other things, and got killed. He's talking to existing churches. These are seven literal churches. Today, we would call them all in Turkey. These are literal churches that he's talking to. And the book of Revelation starts with the church first. Why? Because with all the things that's going to come in the rest of Revelations and all the things that's coming upon the earth, the church has to identify what its problems are and get them fixed to be the glorious church so it can walk through all the stuff that's coming. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. But notice what he says in verse 2. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. I have not found your works perfectly before God. Remember, therefore, how thou hast received, they first received, and you heard, and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt know, not know what hour I'll come unto thee. He said here, you won't even know what time it is. It'll be the last days, and you won't, you'll be so preoccupied, you won't even have any spiritual sense at all. Read down verse 7. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things say of he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. I know your works. Behold, I've set before you an open door. No man can shut it. You got a little strength. That word strength there is deutimus. You got a little miraculous power. We know where that came from, the word. And you have kept my word, and you have not denied my name. Look, I'm going to make them of the synagogue which Satan would say there are Jews and are not, but do lie, behold, I'm going to make them to come and worship at your feet. And I'm going to make them to know that it's you that I love. Why? You have kept the word of my patience. And I will also keep you from the hour of temptation which will come upon the earth. This is the church that will make the rapture. <laughs> Philadelphia church is good ground. <laughs> Satan couldn't do nothing to this church. You mean to tell me there can be a place where Satan can't do nothing to me? You mean there's a place that affliction don't, won't work and persecution won't work and cares of this world won't work and deceitfulness of riches won't work and lust of other things just won't work? Whatever Satan tries against me, it just ain't going to work. It doesn't work at all. That's right. That's the place. And that can be you. Good ground. <laughs> Starts with a decision of yours. Praise God to be good ground every day. Praise God. This church of Philadelphia is the overcoming church. Praise God. Then here's the last one. Verse 14. And unto the angel of the church of the Lady of Seans, write, These things say unto all men, the faithful, the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God, I know your works. I know you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were cold or hot. But because you are lukewarm, you are neither cold nor hot. I vomit you out my mouth. 
Why? Because the word because means, here's the reason. You say, I am rich. I'm increased with goods. I don't need nothing. And you don't know that you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. And you don't even know it. How did Satan attack this church? With prosperity. Now, God is the author of prosperity. Proverbs 10, 27 said, The blessing of the Lord maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow to it. Amen. But it can be turned into deceitfulness of riches. And that's where riches loses its rightful place. He got to this church, and it made this church comfortable. How many comfortable churches have I preached in? Amen. When I started out, we started out, there wasn't no TV lights. <laughs> Big shields and carpeting. Six-inch seats. Air conditioning. We had funeral fans. <laughs> there are a few people in here go back with me that far. We didn't have nowhere to park. Amen. We walked. When we got our first building, people had to walk two miles to church. They walked to come to Word of Faith. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. Now, well, bless the Lord. <laughs> it's too hot in the church. It's too cold in the church. I got to wait in line too long. Oh, I got to walk too far to the front door. I'm out there in the parking lot G. Well, I ain't going to church today. <laughs> I need some amens. Amen. Hallelujah. Too inconvenient to go to church Sunday morning and Sunday night. When I grew up, man, we went to Sunday school. Then we went to service. Then we went to afternoon service. Then we went to the special thing they had, you know, YPW. Then we went to church that night, we went to church the whole day. Didn't have no children's church, didn't have no nursery. Come on, somebody. Didn't have no air conditioning. We didn't have none of that. But we was in the house of God because it was God's day. We wasn't out there trying to get a big house, so we're going to sacrifice giving God his day so we can make sure that we got the comfortable house. And the Lord said, put chewy, I spit you out my mouth. Satan attacked him with number four. What was the answer to number four? Seek the kingdom of God first. Seek his ways of doing things. Let him do the add. He will add it on to you. Hallelujah. I said Hallelujah. And when Satan gets you with number four, and he couples that with some of the others, that's the reason why you get so much debt. Guess what debt does? Debt does particularly two things. It freezes you in place so you cannot go and obey God. Are you listening to me? And it gives you a false appearance. It's a lie. It makes you look like you got something you don't. If I ask, like Bill said last night, how many of you own your house? If you got a mortgage, you don't own it. And if you don't believe it, don't pay that note. I don't owe nobody nothing, nowhere, not a dime. So if God says uproot and go to France, I can go tomorrow. Are you listening to me? Glory to God. Now, go back to Mark chapter 4. Now, let me come down the home stretch. Anybody getting anything out of this? 
Jesus said, now, if you don't know this, you don't know nothing. And every parable that Jesus taught, you're supposed to take this parable and overlay it. Okay? Then you'll find out really what it is God's saying. Amen? He said, this is how Satan works, this is how God works, and this is what you should do. I'm making this a book when the whole thing, it took, took me about nine or ten weeks to teach this, actually, to break it all down. Right. Amen? Amen. And I'm, I'm making a book out of this, and my title of the book is Everything Happens for a Reason. Amen. You know how people say, well, you know, everything happens for a reason, but they don't know what the reason is. <laughs> Jesus told you reason in Mark chapter 4. Now, Mark chapter 4. Jesus, let's pick up in verse 33. And with many such parables spake he the word unto them, and they were able to hear it. But without a parable spake he not unto them, and when they were alone, he expounded all things to his disciples. So guess what? He taught the crowd. He took all day and taught this crowd this parable, by the way. Took a whole day and did it. And then when he was done teaching the crowd, then he sat down with his ministerial staff and gave them extra teaching. Amen? He gave his staff extra instructions on what he just taught. Now, verse 35. And the same day when the evening was come, it's now nighttime, he said unto them, let us pass over to the other side. Now, you got to ask the question, why did Jesus say, let's pass over to the other side? There's a reason why. In fact, keep a finger here, turn to John chapter 8, and I'll show you why he said, let's go to the other side. John chapter 8, we'll read verse 28. Then said Jesus unto them, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall you know I am he. And you, something else you're going to know, that I do nothing, I do nothing, I do nothing. I do nothing. I do nothing of myself. I don't decide anything. Which means I don't go to the other side unless I have orders. I don't decide to go to the other side. I do nothing of myself. But as my father hath taught me, I speak these things. He that sent me is with me. The father hath not left me alone. I do always those things that please him. God could trust Jesus. And that's the reason why he could turn up the manifestation of the power with Jesus. Because Jesus would only say what God said. He would only do what God told him to do. He would only go to the place only the father sent him. If they're going to the other side, it's because Jesus received an instruction from the Father to go to the other side. Now, why would God tell Jesus to go to the other side? Because Jesus has an assignment on the other side. There is somebody on the other side that Jesus is supposed to minister to. You see, when God gives you an assignment, it's because somebody needs you. When you don't follow the assignment that God gave you, that means that individual then is going to stay bound, and you are going to be required for it. Are you listening to me? Praise God. You were the one that the Father selected for that post. And if you won't listen to him, you're responsible. I have no choice. I have to go to Poland. I have to go to France. I have to go to all these countries. I have been required to do so. I've been told to do so. I didn't decide to do so. I've been told to do so. I ain't got no choice. Are you listening to me? I'm a soldier, so I'm going where he said to go. Praise God in the word good. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to make sure that you know him and that you find him in your life today. All you have to do is pray with me right now. That's right. Bow your heads. Pray with me right now. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I do believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God 
that he died for me on the cross, is risen from the dead, and is the Lord and Savior. And that's all it takes. Right now, he's coming to your heart, and he's saved you now. We want to give you some material that will help you with your new walk with Christ. It's called, Where Do We Go From Here? And our announcers, I'll tell you more about it in the name of Jesus. The Word of God entered your spirit as you just received Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life, the real you. Your spirit was born again. That means that you're now a new creation in Christ, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. This process started an immediate change in your mind and body. However, to continue this process of change, you must put away your old habits and learn how to walk in your new life with God by starting your day with the Father in prayer. Just a simple prayer of praise and thanksgiving helps to build your fellowship with God. Thank Him for His love, confidence, patience, loving kindness, peace, healing power, safety from all dangers, mercy, wisdom, and guidance for this day. Be sure to take the time to read the Word of God daily. Just like your natural body needs food, your spirit man needs to be fed the Word of God. Also, please write to the address on your screen so we can send you this very important booklet called, Where Do I Go From Here? It contains a wealth of information that you will need now that you've decided to ask the Lord into your heart and continue your walk with God. Finally, it's important that you also take the time to find a church home and have fellowship with other full-time gospel believers. Our prayer for you is that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. Well, this is Keith Butler reminding you to have a wonderful day and always remember to fight the good fight of faith.